J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon says we cannot rule out a hard landing. Joining me now is the Bonson Group managing partner and CIO David Bonson. I want to focus on those comments, David, from Jamie Dimon. He has not been this bearish on the market until those comments were made. Your reaction? Well, I think Jamie has done a very good job for the last couple of years of pointing out various left tail risks, meaning extreme things that could happen that they always want to prepare for. One doesn't have to look any further than how JP Morgan is deploying capital to see that they don't believe it's the most likely scenario that we're going to have a hard landing. They're being very opportunistic. Their own asset allocation models are still invested 60 percent in equities. Um, So I think that preparing for certain things that at any point could go wrong is always prudent. And yet the, the sort of baseline expectation right now has still been reasonably solid. But the question still remains if we're going to get a, a, a rate cut this, this year. And you've now got some saying that they predict a rate hike, which is the complete opposite of where we started 2024. And then you add to that the worries with that big sell off a uh, Thursday. Well, remember, the sell-off on Thursday brought us back to where we were about five days ago. Uh, The market has gone up and down a 1,000 points now four times since March. Uh, The market, with the sell-off it had on Thursday, wasn't any lower than it was uh, about two weeks ago. And you really have a market that started the year expecting six rate cuts that right now is only expecting two rate cuts. It it expected it to start in March. Now it doesn't expect it to start till September. And yet the market is still up eight or nine percent on the year. So I think that investors are far past all this stuff about what the Fed will do and when and won't. They're not going to hike rates. They've made that abundantly clear. There is absolutely no reason for them to hike rates further. Uh, When they actually start cutting rates, I think it adds to volatility, but it has no impact on a real investment plan whatsoever. Okay, well, let's talk about that. How do you position yourself? Because as we hit the first half of the year, The big question is the second half of the year. Many believe that because it's an election year, you are going to get that election year bump in the stock market. Do you subscribe to that? I don't. I think historically the record's pretty clear that it's the third year in a presidential term where the bump comes, that the fourth year is actually often very volatile until you get on the other side of the election, especially lately where these elections are so close and we're really not going to know what's going to happen until after the election. And it's not just the presidential election, I should add. It's what's going to happen with the Senate, the House. There's sort of a number of different unknowns. But my own view is that the um, volatility in the market right now is not so much about the Fed or the election. It's, it's valuation. You just have a very expensive market that has been very top heavy, dependent on a few big tech names. And I think investors have to be more selective at this point, relying on the index to go from 22 times earnings to 25 times earnings is not a very good strategy. Well, what if an index is heavily weighted with NVIDIA? I mentioned that at the beginning of this segment with you. This company has this blowout quarter. You know, many say that NVIDIA is only in the the second inning uh, of a full game, if it's a baseball analogy. What do you say? Because maybe there is a valuation concern with NVIDIA, and that's fair, I think, to bring up. On the other side of that, other companies could play into the AI story that we're not paying attention to right now. Well, I think there are other companies that are in it. We have to recognize that so far the only buddy, uh, the only people making any money on AI are those that are making chips for others to use AI. We still have not figured out where companies are deploying AI in application profitably. Uh, I think NVIDIA will absolutely go down as the Cisco of 1999 here. In other words, a company that got a huge run up and will end up performing great with revenues and earnings. But at some point, the investors who bought it in these high valuations will end up realizing that it has to revert to a regular valuation. You can't get 60 times earnings to go to 80 times earnings and have that be a sustainable investment. Cisco in 1999 was $85. It's grown earnings every year since then. And yet it's at $50 today. That has nothing to do with Cisco underperforming. NVIDIA is going to do fine as a company. It's that the valuation is too high. And when people buy into a bubble, they end up suffering.
feel like I'm back in the internet bubble of 1999, David. Thanks for that. David Bonson, it's great to see you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right.